Okay, guys, December Bass Academy. Today we're going to look at the music of Cameroon, thanks to Helmut's suggestion uh, last week, or the, the week before when we had our last lesson. There was a track he was specifically interested in that we're going to look at and try and analyse what the bass is doing. So Cameroon is famous for Makossa. Uh, it's also famous for Manu Dibango. He's a artist who's quite. He's kind of one of these very popular African artists who's who've kind of made it in the kind of crossover. Um, you know, not not all artists who sing in languages um, outside of European languages make you know get their music to be popular in in Europe and in America. Um, Especially, you know, we were talking about Yusundor before. The songs he releases in the West are much more simple and easy for Westerners to understand, not the lyrics, but understand the rhythms and, and dance to them and feel them. Um, so it's a slightly kind of sort of um, softened down version of his music that, that, you, that people kind of know him for um, outside of the country. Um, but yeah, Manu de Bango is pretty funky. What I'm going to do is show you a bit of a clip. So the what most people probably would know, a track by Michael Jackson called Wanna Be Starting Something. That was a pretty big hit. And that uses um, some of this track, as you're about to see, um, uses the vocal line. Um, I think, I can't remember the story, but originally... I think Michael Jackson just used this line, um, you know, not as a sample, but just just used it. And it was maybe Manu Dibango wasn't credited at first, but he was a few years later on. And I imagine that if you've ever got a a payout from a Michael Jackson royalty, that it's probably one of the best kind of <laughs> royalty payouts um, that you can get. So hopefully that was. That uh, that was good. So let me just find the video. It'll be two seconds. Yeah. So this is that track, which is called Soul Makossa. So it sounds quite funky, and it's um, this is from 1972. <laughs> Yeah, so that's just a little taste of there. That was uh, Manu de Bango from the early 70s. So the uh, the track we're going to look at today that Helmut has suggested is called African Tipeek Collection by Sam Fan Thomas. Okay. Um, as uh, as Tim Tim pointed out just before we started, is that this isn't traditional Makossa, this is actually Makassi, which is another Cameroonian genre. And as you guys were saying about connections between Congolese music and Cameroonian music, um, 
there is going to be a lot of this because countries are right next to each other. Um, Congo, you know, unfortunately has had lots of war, um, civil wars, rebel groups fighting, wars for all kinds of things. They had a pretty um, heavy dictator, Mobutu, who was from the 70s to the 90s. So um, a lot of people would have escaped Congo for various reasons or you know, left and migrated. Um, I'm sure a lot of them would have ended up in Cameroon. Um, Congo's got 450 tribes. Cameroon has got a lot of tribes as well. And some of them are the what's known as Bantu, so it's descendants of the kind of original Bantu people that inhabited the Congo basin. So if there are if some of the tribes in Cameroon have a common ancestor from the tribes in Congo, then there are going to be similarities in the language groups and there's going to be similarities in I imagine in the kind of rhythms and what people like to dance to and enjoy. So um, one thing that is very different is you, you, know, you, you don't often find people in Congo playing finger style. You know, they do this thumb technique, as we've shown in the other lessons uh, in Cameroon. There's, it's a lot funkier. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of that funk comes from like, you know, with Congo, with that, that sucus beat, if you've got a kick, and uh ja 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 then it does you know although that's amazing and that's great for dancing and and some people love that music you having the snare um playing in other parts of the bar can sometimes make things a lot funky like in in funk music you know dum ka dum ka dum ka dum dum ka dum ka them having that backbeat, having a snare landing on the four, or sorry, on the two and the four, um, or other places in the bar, which isn't like a kind of more of a fixed kind of clave style rhythm that's always going through it, means there can be a lot more space. Um, so there's more flexibility for that in Makossa. There, there's lots of different grooves they use in Makossa. There's, it's, there's not always a fixed, like, like Sukus groove like there is in Congo um, so there's a lot more different sounding stuff um, yeah um, at, at one point Congolese music was banned in Cameroon and it was illegal because the it was getting so popular and the the, the Cameroonian um, government I guess or president would have wanted the Cameroonian music to flourish more um, <laughs> so that would have been a way. So the, the track we're going to look at, um, the version that I've got here, the it's it's not in 440 hertz tuning. So if you try and play along with the with the track and you're in standard E A D G and you tune with a tuner, then it's one of those annoying things that never sounds quite right in. And um, so if you know either that's because the recording has slightly uh, maybe the quality of the recording has slightly changed in the version that's been uploaded and I've got, um, or just sometimes people tuning by ear and there's not um, a fixed instrument like a keyboard there. Sometimes it's in a, you know, it's not tuned. So um, if you get, you just have to tune to me. So if you, this is my G string. Just try and get it matching as close as possible. Yeah, so the closer it gets, the less kind of circles of vibration or however you describe it, um, there'll be less dissonance. There we go. If you need me to give you these notes again at any point, just let me know. So move onto the D string. A string.
so it's, they're all a bit sharp from normal 440 hertz. Cool. And um, if you are, if you have ever got a track that you're trying to play along to that's just not quite in the key, best way to do it is uh, try and sing the bass line and and or sing sing a note from it, and then hold that note with your mouth or your ears if you, if you can, and then tune your bass to that note. So what I mean by that is like if if you can hear something in the bass line that's like. Um, uh, then you can kind of sing that note uh, from, with, with along the record and then you can hear like da, that's out of tune da, and then tune your bass up to the note that you're singing and you just try and hold that note as um, close to the record as possible um, cool so I'm going to play the track first just have a little listen to it think about what instruments there are. We're going to break it down in a minute. Think about what is the kick drum doing. Basically, we're in G major, chords are D, C, and G. So we're just going to, there, there are a few kind of little variations and stuff that the bass player plays. Um, one thing you can actually hear the bass player is slapping some of those notes. Um, you can still play the bass line perfectly fine with finger style, and it, and it does go to finger style as well um, for that track. So um, there are a couple of variations. <laughs> So we start on D, and we're just going to go low D, fifth fret on the A string, and the octave, seventh fret on the G string. Just like this. So the notes are dum dum D D, just on the D. Dum dum D D, but it needs a bit more feeling. So you put get dum dum D D. This this kind of it can be just a you can you can play a kind of a, a muted note so by not pitching the note properly and going mute D D like get or you can you can fret that note and play D D D up to you you know sort of moving these things around and and not doing it the same every time is what kind of builds up the feeling so we go. One, two, three, four. So you can fret that first note or mute it. Okay, then the next bit is just we go A, B, C, A, B, C, A, seventh fret on the D string, B, fourth fret on the G string, C, next fret. And that needs a bit more feeling as well. You know, you can play it straight like that or something like if, you, if you're going. So what I'm doing there is I'm hammering on from the G to the A, fifth fret to the seventh fret, and then I'm going do playing the B, and then I'm muting a note before I play the C. So instead of I'm adding in. Do 
So. Let's go check with the track again just to check I'm going to get the rhythm correct on the next bit. So, and at the end, we just go to the G, low G. So the essence is da, 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 do, 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 but with a bit of feeling, ga, dum, gum, gum, ba, da, 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 or mute it. And what the bass player is doing is sometimes they're playing low D, high D, do, do, D, D, and then sometimes high, low. Sometimes it's varying, so it'll just be one bar of starting low, and then the next bar high. But it doesn't always, I think it doesn't always fit that format. And when you're putting that kind of feel, feeling notes, it is then quite nice to just have the straight. Yeah. So we'll slow that down a bit and we'll just keep looping it. And you know, the important thing, if you if you are struggling to get any of these notes, we just make sure you, you can sing that rhythm. Sing it with me. And then we play it. Three, four. track on and then you just try and play along at that with the tempo. variation that just happened now I want to show you that one it goes so if you move what you're playing so you're centering around the D 10th fret on the E string and we do I mean you can also play the whole line here and instead of the low G we just play the higher G here So same rhythm, just changing the notes, we're going F sharp, 
11th fret on the G string, down to the E, D, and then the C. F sharp, E, D, C. And I'm kind of hammering up, hammering on, I should say, from the E up to the F sharp, light fret to 11th fret. So it's that same rhythm. Oops, wrong note. And I think the only bass player only does this variation once, but you know, you could use it more often. I mean, especially if, if I was... If I was playing that song live, you know, what you'd find is... Variations that I put in would be my, would be my variations that would sound like me. Wouldn't sound like the same bass player. That's I guess how you tell bass players apart. What would I do? slides or slide to the low note slide to the high note or slide to low D 